Welcome everybody to another motocross action video. I'm Josh Mosman and today we are testing the 2023 Kawasaki KX450 four stroke. We really love this bike, but we also have a lot of complaints about it as well. And it did not change for the new model season. So that means we know this bike like the back of our hands. We know what it does great and we know what it can improve on. So in this video, we're gonna tell you guys all about the pros and cons of the new 2023 KX450. The Kawasaki KX450 was brand new in 2019 when it gained an updated engine that was more responsive off the crack of the throttle and it made more of a broad power, but it actually was slightly lower on horsepower than the 2018 450. The 2019 bike also came with the Showa spring forks that this bike has today. It switched from the Showa air forks that it had before. The front axle, it was increased from 20 to 25 mil. The shock, it was moved five millimeters to the right and the linkage was also updated to work with it as well. The 2019 bike also came with new front brake master cylinder, a larger front brake rotor, and foot pegs that were five mil wider and three millimeters moved backwards. Since then, the 2020 bike, it stayed the same. Then the 2021 KX450, that was the last time this bike saw some recent changes. It was seven millimeters larger clutch basket with larger plates. And it also came with the KTM copy Belleville washer spring instead of the five individual coil springs inside of the clutch. And the 2020 2021 bike also got the modern day one and one eighth inch handlebars. But since 2021, this bike hasn't seen any updates. So we know this bike like the back of our hand. Got a lot of time on the KX450. We really appreciate a lot of things that this bike does well, but we're also so disappointed in a lot of the things that this bike misses the mark on just briefly. Kawasaki came out with the KX450 SR. It's kind of a factory edition model of the KX450 for 2022. We spent a lot of time on that. The suspension was amazing. The power was amazing. And there was a lot of little updates that Kawasaki made that brought the KX450 way ahead of this stock KX450 that we have here sitting behind me. Because we rode that KX450 factory edition, it almost makes it harder to go back to the stock bike now because we know how good this bike can be and we know exactly what this bike needs to be at the top of the 450 class. So we got a lot of pros and a lot of cons, but let's start off this video with the things that we already like about the Kawasaki KX450. Starting off with the engine, this bike is low on the power totem pole. It only peaks out at 56.9 horsepower, so just under 57 horsepower, which is ahead of only the Suzuki RMZ450. But we do like the KX450 power band because it picks up so quick off the crack of the throttle. It's snappy, it's fun to ride, and it gets into the power quickly. And because it's low on horsepower and because it picks up quickly. It's actually really easy to ride this KX450. A lot of our test riders have fun on it and uh, we've said it before and we'll say it again. We call this power band crisp and quick revving. Those are the two real phrases that come to mind when you're riding this KX450 on the track. It's snappy, fun to ride, great throttle response and with the couplers you have different options. You have a mellow coupler that you can put on, you got a standard green coupler and then you also got the white aggressive coupler that makes it even more snappy off the bottom end. You can't change the maps on the handlebars like you can with a lot of the other bikes, but pretty easy to change the couplers, pull off the track, pull into the pits and try out the mellow standard and aggressive couplers. We usually run with the stock coupler, but uh, I think some of our pro riders, I like to ride with the white coupler sometimes, but uh, the stock is plenty exciting off the bottom end and uh, overall good. So because this bike isn't crazy fast and because it's just smooth to ride, that's one huge plus of the KX450. Another huge plus is the aluminum frame and the suspension on the KX450. Once you get the suspension dialed in for your weight, and speed, preferably if you send it off to your favorite suspension tuner, this bike handles like a dream. You guys saw Jason Anderson racing outdoors. He got his first 450 national overall win at Hangtown this year. He got two overall wins. The second one came at Bud's Creek. He was looking really good on the KX450 and all of our test riders love how this bike handles. In general, once you fix the forks, this bike is very easy to ride on the track. It turns exceptionally well and it's very stable and long straightaways, but the suspension is definitely soft. Starting out this bike, 
bike has 5.0 springs in the forks and the Showa spring forks. For most of our test riders, we have to go up a spring rate to a 5.1 or even 5.2 for our faster and heavier riders. And that'll kind of level out the chassis. So looking at the list, we got an engine that is smooth and easy to ride. And we got a chassis that is comfortable and easy to turn and stable in the straightaways. Those are two huge pluses about the KX450 and things that we like. Riding the KX450 SR, the factory edition bike, that came with KYB suspension. Super easy to ride, a lot stiffer and a lot more plush. Not a lot of issues. A lot of our test riders had fun with that bike in its stock form. We didn't take as long to get used to it. That KX450 SR also had some updates to the cylinder head. It came with a pro circuit header and the muffler on it. It also came with updated ECU settings that boosted the power on the KX450 SR to 60 horsepower. Insane amount of improvement from the stock bike to the factory edition bike was extremely fast, but it wasn't hard to ride. It still kept its smooth overall broad power band, making it easy to ride on the track, but also giving it enough horsepower to keep up with the KTM, with the Honda, and with the Yamaha down the long start straight that we have here at Glen Helen. Because it is slower and low on the horsepower totem pole, you're giving up a lot of power going down the start straight here at Glen Helen. You're giving up power going up the hills here at Glen Helen. And we always talk about it. 350s are great bikes, and maybe you can get a lap time that'll keep up with the 450s on a 350. But if you're in a race, it's all about the start, and it's all about staying ahead of the competition. And when your bike's slower than the rest, it's gonna be harder to get the start and harder to stay ahead of them going up the steep hills or down long straightaways. All right, now we gotta change over to the con side, what we don't like about the KX450. And I gotta say, we have such high expectations for this bike after riding the KX450 SR and after learning so much about this bike since 2019 when it got the new engine and updated chassis. We know this bike like the back of our hands and we see the potential and we get so bummed out when we strip out bolts, when we bottom out the forks and when we see the fork guards crack, the muffler crack off of the subframe and also just a long list of things that fall part on this bike. So diving into what we don't like about the KX450, the forks are way, way too soft. This bike handles so well when you get the forks right, but these forks dive under braking extremely hard. For almost all of our test riders, they're too soft. Even our lightest guys at 130, 140 pounds on the scale, the forks are still too soft and it's overpowered by the shock on the KX450. So once you fix those forks, you can find that amazing handling that the KX450 has. It's there, but it's just harder to find with the stock forks. So to get that 5.1 spring rate in the fork. Sometimes we'll put a 5.2 spring in one fork leg and lead the 5.0 spring in the other one. And that'll bring you to the middle range of a 5.1 fork spring on the KX450. Go up to the 5.2 on both fork legs and that'll give you a stiffer and better hold up coming into corners. Diving into the list of things that the KX450 just barely misses the mark on, we gotta start with the bar mounts. I do like that the top triple clamp has two holes in it so you can move the bar mounts to the front position to get your weight further up on the bike and to the back position to uh, keep it in the standard position where the handlebars come stock. But these bar mounts are the most flimsy 450 bar mounts on the market. Anytime you tip this bike over in a corner, you're gonna bend the bar mounts. You're gonna have to slap them back to get them back straight again. Our test rider, Connor Styers was doing the photos and videos for us today and he had a couple tip overs on this bike trying to make the bike look good for video and photos. And in one of those tip overs, bent the bar completely to, to the side. That is a huge con and it's not very durable on the KX450. We also don't like the levers. For some reason, the front brake lever is super skinny and it's actually skinnier than the clutch lever. They do not feel comfortable in your hands. So the levers are just awkward and kind of hard to figure out. The rear brake, it is massive. It comes with a 250 mil rear brake rotor on the KX450. 
KTX 450. For example, the KTM 450 rear brake comes with a 220 rotor, 30 mil smaller on the KTM, and we never complain about the KTM not having enough rear brake power. It doesn't make sense. Kawasaki came out with a 240 rotor on their KX 450X cross country model, a 240 rotor on their KX 250. Appreciate it so much more, but this one is super touchy. Every time you just think about hitting the rear brake, it ends up locking up, coming into corners. The rear brake pedal, it's hard to move it down. You don't have a lot of adjustments. It makes it hard to be smooth through the corners and uh, definitely a big issue. We also don't like the fork guards on the KX 450. These things are prone to braking. We don't have this issue with any other bike except Kawasaki, but if you don't have fork guard graphics on and you get roosted, odds are your fork guards are gonna crack. This happened to us last year on this bike. The first day of riding it, we got hit by a rock going down a straightaway and shattered the fork guards. It's happened to us countless times in the KX450 and they haven't updated their fork guard plastics yet. That is a huge con. The KX450 also has steel bolts littered all throughout the chassis, but they go into aluminum threads, which causes it to be a lot, a lot easier to strip out the bolts on the KX450. The eight millimeter bolt that goes into the subframe to hold on the left side number panel that you use to get on and off to take the air filter out, that is the most stripped bolt in motocross. How so? Well, we have to take it off every time we get into the air filter. It's a steel bolt going into an aluminum subframe. We strip it out, all of our friends strip it out everybody has issues with it another complaint when you're changing the air filter you need an eight millimeter bolt at the bottom and a 10 millimeter t-handle to get the seat bolt off both of those have to come off to change the air filter so i do like that you can get the air filter on and off easily from the side but using two different t-handles to get it off is kind of a hassle that you just don't have on other motorcycles the back plates that hold the the seat bolts on those fall out extremely easily we use the bolts mx t-plates to replace on there just so they got a new flange inside of there that's meant to stay and they don't fall out every time you change the seat or take the air filter out so that is a huge plus from bolt mx another big issue with the kx450 is the chain roller this thing blows apart super easily we always replace our chain rollers on our kx450 with tm design works chain rollers and their whole slide and guide kit just to boost the durability on the chain chains an extremely important part of keeping your dirt bike safe to ride if your chain breaks as odds are you're going to get hurt very seriously so we always take care, care of our chains Another issue with the KX450 is the subframe mount where the muffler goes on. That is prone to breaking as well. So if you don't have a rubber mounted muffler, like some aftermarket mufflers come solid mounted onto the subframe, those are prone to breaking. The muffler is easy to break off of the subframe. So that's something that's happened to a few friends of mine and it's something you definitely need to watch out for on your KX450. With the radiator, this comes with a 1.8 radiator cap. We always install a 2.0 twin air power flow uh, radiator cap on these. Keep them from overheating. That is something that happens to us quite a bit when we're out here racing on Saturdays at Saturday MX races at Glen Helen. <laughs> Overall, a lot of things on the KX450 that just missed the mark, and there's so much potential that this bike has, especially after riding the KX450 SR, the factory edition version of this bike. Yes, it was an expensive Kawasaki KX450, but it was an amazing bike. It fixed a lot 
of our flaws that we find with the KX450 and its stock version. And we were really hoping that Kawasaki would have trickled a lot of those updates onto their stock bike for 2023. But unfortunately, that was not the case. This bike is exactly the same as it was last year. And now we're looking ahead to 2024, hoping that Kawasaki fixes a lot of these issues that we have with this bike because it is such a great bike once you get it figured out. It's not very durable. There's a lot of issues that happen with durability side, but if they would just fix a little bit of the durability issues, give us some stiffer forks in the stock form. This bike handles exceptionally well, fun to ride, super comfortable to ride, and we see the potential that this bike has. It retails for $95.99, so it's a fairly good price point, lower than most of the other bikes on the price point scale, but the KX450 has such great potential, such a great platform, and just needs a few things to make it a durable racer that you can have fun on and ride for hours and hours. So long story short, MXA Wrecking Crew, we have fun on this bike and we know it like the back of our hands. If you guys want to learn more about the KX450, check out our website, motocrossactionmag.com. We're also going to be putting it up against the rest of the 2023 450s. The KTMs and the Huskies are all new. The Yamaha is all new and we're excited to get our hands on that one soon. The Honda Sierra 450, it received a few updates. This bike and the Suzuki and the Gas Gas, they're exactly the same for 2023. So we're plugging that way, getting ready for our 2023 450 shootout. Stay tuned for that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Motocross Action Magazine. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.